Are you doing your part? I'm doing my part. Have you been spreading managed democracy? Well, as long as you don't think about it, you can be a hell diver too. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Today, I'm here to tell you that managed democracy and hell divers works kind of the same as a lot of democracies have worked. Cue the comments section. I can almost hear the screeching now. This is going to be great. Join the hell divers. Anyway, get ready to hear that word a lot. In fact, let's get a democracy counter up right now so that way we can keep track of how many times I'd say that word in this video. Anyway, for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, let's get you all caught up. Helldivers 2 released earlier this year, and it basically got people to say democracy more than any politician in modern day has successfully been able to do, which should really say something. Now, Helldivers is obviously just a meme of Starship Troopers, which is probably the most mid-1990s movie that's ever been made. Don't believe me? That's fine. I won't ban you for a wrong thing. The premise of the game is pretty simple. Basically, you and the boys get together and probably like the one girl who likes playing online shooters that you know, you guys crack some beers or a wine cooler in the previously mentioned case, and you guys go and you slay alien life forms for hours on end, spreading managed democracy. Now, managed democracy is just a clever ploy to get the citizens of the Helldivers world, known as Super Earth, feel like they actually have a say in what their government is doing. You see, the Federation, or the government of Super Earth, designed a software that updated the old concept of democracy for a more modern age. As described in the game, it says this. Mankind has improved upon the old concept of democracy, utilizing computer-aided voting software. Citizens are asked to answer several questions, and the outcome of their votes is decided upon by the computer. This removes the uncertainty that existed in the old system, where voters didn't understand fully what they were voting for, giving us managed democracy. So basically, you take a random personality test, and the AI makes up your vote, and thusly manages your democracy. It's basically the government version of those stupid tests that we see all over social media, like pick these colors, choose these bands, we'll tell you what your personality is, and we'll get you down to a T by you just telling us a little bit about yourself. But instead of a fun thing on social media to show your friends, it's a government and them basically ruling over you. God, I really hope our governments don't take this to heart. Anyway, all of this got me thinking, how have democracies actually worked in the past? And what is democracy actually supposed to be? Now, democracy gets bandied about a lot today, but I don't think a lot of people actually realize what it is, how it's been used in the past, and so on. You can see here from Britannica.com that democracy came from the ancient Greek city-states like Athens, and that democracy means rule by the people. Democracy, literally, rule by the people. The term is derived from the Greek demokratia, which was coined from demos, people, and kratos, rule, in the middle of the 5th century BCE to denote the political systems then existing in some Greek city-states, notably Athens. But before we go any further, you guys should manage some democracy all over that subscribe button. I should really think about my phrasing when I ask you guys to do this, but you guys should seriously subscribe. That would mean the world to me. Holy crap, that was bad. So Athenian democracy lasted from about 508 to 322 BC. They would pick 500 people from a pool of citizens that would go and vote for pretty much the entire nation. Now, during their democracy, it was noted that uh, the ancient philosopher Socrates was put to death because of wrong think for democracy. Now, I have a very important question to ask you about this. Have you guys thought about the Roman Empire lately? <laughs> uh, well, if you haven't, haha, made you think. Anyway, now that all of us are thinking about the Roman Empire, how did Rome use democracy? Well, they basically let their citizens vote on small matters while the Roman Republic basically handled national matters. Essentially, taking the citizens and instead of having them vote for the entire nation, they put them on the kitty table and said, here, you guys can vote for this crap over here. We're going to go do this. And if you guys know anything about Rome and the Roman Republic, my God, that history is insane. 
The reason that it's insane is because it mirrors a lot of what's going on today, and probably the reason that a lot of people think about the Roman Empire when they think about the current modern day political strife that's going on. It's almost like we haven't learned from history. But who can blame us? American test scores are kind of in the dumps right now, and that kind of sucks. Maybe we should vote on that. So at this point, we've already moved the rule of the people to, that's a nice vote, Timmy, we'll put that up on the fridge. Something that made the citizens feel good, but really didn't matter in the long run. All right, enough about the Roman Empire. We've thought about that enough today, maybe. I'll think about it a little more later. Now it's time to move on to France, you know, with their towers and their food and their fashion and their version of democracy. In 1792, France tried to be like America, keyword being tried and they decided to establish a republic that espoused democratic virtues. Basically, 800 representatives were elected by the people, and then the people really didn't do a whole lot after that. During this time period, it would be taken over by revolutionaries, and over 20,000 people were jailed as enemies of the state for democracy. And the cherry on top, the first French Republic ended in 1804. Just 12 years. 12 years, that's all the French could muster. They, they, that, that's it. Moving on from that train wreck, in 1849, Denmark established a constitution to limit the power of the monarch and giving the citizens the ability to vote every four years. This government is still in place today, and at this point I'm starting to think that democracy isn't the main course. It's more like a side dish to whatever government decides to do with it. Regardless, Denmark has maintained this form of government for over a century, and they're actually one of the few nations that were able to liberate themselves from German control in World War II. Fast forwarding through the next few examples, because I don't want this to turn into a college lecture, not like I went to college, so I don't even know what those are. But the French tried it yet again, and this time, they managed the Second French Republic for a whole four years. Holy crap, France, get it together. Guys, at this point, I feel like France is, th their form of government is just a mosh pit. I mean, it's just, hey, let's just, let's get together every few years. We're gonna mosh for a little bit and you know, it'll be good. Holy crap, man. So the next example on our list that espoused democratic virtues was the Weimar Republic. And we all know how that turned out. So why go through the history of all of these governments espousing democratic virtues? The answer is simple. Just like in Helldivers, most governments come to power by espousing democratic virtues, and they start handing out votes like Oprah hands out cars. You get a vote, and you get a vote, and you get a vote. At least once. Now, depending on the government, some hold true to these values, and other governments use it to gain the trust of the populace and then turn it against them. Just vote for us and we'll do all the heavy lifting. That seems to be the big ask that's asked time and time again. As we said earlier in Helldivers, they have a computer that basically decides what your vote is. And if that isn't bad enough, you're not even allowed to question the Federation or the government of Super Earth. And I quote, questions regarding the Federation or government of Super Earth shall be sent to the appropriate quadrant. It is illegal to express oneself openly about the Federation or government of Super Earth in a negative manner, and in serious cases may result in arrest or termination. It's even stated that citizens have turned in their own children for speaking negatively about Super Earth. Crimes like that go directly to the Ministry of Unity. Remember, loyalty is rewarded. Report any dissident activity. So why then is the term democracy used in the Helldivers world and in the real world so cavalierly? The answer to that in my mind is simple. As long as their citizens think they have a choice, they'll be a lot less likely to go all 1776 on their asses. See, based on the game lore, the not actual democracy and the comforts of Super Earth are used as weapons against the citizens in order to keep the government in power. The tactic of people keeping just comfortable enough not to rebel is pretty similar to what the Roman Empire did. Hey, I told you guys I was gonna think about it again. And in order to maintain their power, the government of Super Earth has gone out and democratized other civilizations at the point of a gun barrel. So in conclusion, the greatest weapon in Helldivers is the false sense of democracy. They lure their citizens into a false sense of being actually represented and then kill any voices that would speak out against them. So the next time you, the viewer, hear a politician talk about democracy, you should really be asking the question, what do they mean by that? So thank you all so much for checking out this video. If you guys liked what you saw here, the best way to support the channel is to go in the link in the description below and pick up some merch for yourself. 
Also, if you guys aren't tired of me yet, go back and check out some of my past videos. I just did an awesome video about the Shangri-La Frontier anime, VR, and how the real world is getting very, very close to some insane stuff with virtual reality gaming. It's basically going to turn into the Matrix, and it's absolutely terrifying, but it's going to be really, really cool to go on that journey about all the technology. I want to give a shout out to my boy Redoubt Productions here on YouTube. He runs an American history channel, but when doing research for this video and trying to put things together succinctly, he really, really came in clutch for me and gave me a bunch of examples throughout history to use today. So thank you so much to Redoubt Productions, and you guys should absolutely go check him out. And as always, until next time, for democracy, I mean, sh I mean, cheers, everybody. I feel like at this point, democracy is just a way for people to vote us into communism. Oh my God, it, oh, people don't get it. Oh, interesting. I wonder how many times I've actually said democracy in this video. God, it's gonna suck editing that counter. All right. Ugh. Government of Super Earth decided... <laughs> France tried to be like America. Keyword being tried. <laughs> 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 oh.